Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. As those of you who regularly watch my content know, I make videos aimed at more advanced users and I assume you already have some knowledge going into each video, but I've decided to do some more beginner content alongside that. So I'm gonna be doing some videos starting with this video, showing you how to install Unity, set up the inspector, explaining how it all works. And then in future videos, I'll be covering, for example, the animator, the physics system, things inside Unity that you need to understand to start making a game. And then I'll also be covering um, packages like Pro Builder, Cinemachine, the common packages a lot of games use. Feel free to let me know down below what kind of content you want covered and I'll be covering it at a beginner level assuming you have no prior knowledge. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the series. If you do, leave a like and subscribe. Well, let's get into it. So step one is of course installing Unity. I'll leave a link down below in the description to Unity's website in case you don't already have it. All you need to do is click on get started and then assuming you're not a business and you're actually an individual or a beginner, you click over here personal, free, get started, okay? And then it asks if you're a returning user or a first time user. Now, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you just want to get the Unity Hub. So you click start here on first time users, agree to the download, and you get this thing called the Unity Hub. And the Unity Hub is actually where all your downloads are kept. So all the different Unity versions that you download, because obviously they release new updates, usually two or three times a year, these big updates for the engine. And you're gonna to want to have those on your Unity Hub. So once you get the EXE, you want to run it, go through the setup, and then you'll end up with a screen like this. So when your hub is open, you'll probably have no projects here, assuming you've never used Unity before. Uh, you actually want to head over to the cog at the top right. Maybe you actually meet the screen first, I can't quite remember. Uh, on license management, you shouldn't have a license. So you want to now activate a license, okay? For Unity Personal, you wanna say that you don't use it in a professional capacity because you're a beginner, presumably you don't use it in a professional capacity. Press done and it gives you a license, okay? Now, when you go over back to Unity here, you want to download an actual Unity version because right now all you have is Unity Hub, which is where you can see your installs, see your projects, go to the Learn tab. You don't actually have Unity Game Engine installed. So there are different versions that come out each year, updates and stuff you can get them from here, okay? So if you click on add, now for you, if you've not got one already, I'm not quite sure what it looks like, but I'm sure you can figure it out. You want to download probably the latest official release, which for me right now is Unity 2019.3.1 F1. And that's what I have, okay? When you actually click it and then go next, so let's pretend I'm getting this version, it asks you for some packages you want, some extras. So for the modules, uh, if you don't already have a code editor that you like, um, use Visual Studio Community. It's you know really good for Unity. It's what most people use. So if you watch other YouTube tutorials or mine, I use Visual Studio. Most people use Visual Studio, though you don't have to. I'd recommend getting it if you don't already have it. And then you can add build support, but I'd say ignore that for now because we're not actually building a game to any platform like Android or iOS. Then documentation is ticked. You can leave that ticked. It helps you get uh, info about what certain code does when you're actually using it in Visual Studio. Uh, if we press cancel now, because I'm not actually going to install, you guys should obviously do the install. Then you'll see here it's installed when it's done. That allows you to now go over to projects, click new, okay? Then you get these different template projects. Now it says that uh, 2D and 3D here, but the thing is, even if you want to make a 2D game and you click 3D, it doesn't matter. You can change it later on. It's not actually forcing you to make a game that's 2D or 3D. It just gives you the uh, setup and certain settings are tweaked to you know favor 3D or 2D development. For now, I'm going to stay on two, uh, sorry, 3D and just name it. I'm going to name it getting started with Unity. Okay. And just pick a location on your PC. And when you're done, press create. So when you open Unity, you'll be met with lots of different windows that you can actually redock by dragging them around like this. So I could drag this over here and this down here. You can do whatever you want. You can scale it. Okay. And if you ever decide, you know, you want to go back, you can actually go over to the top right click on default because that's what it was using. And I can set, for example, uh, tall, or I can set for a split, or I can set default, which is what it is when you first set up Unity. So if you ever want to reset, go to default. And as you see here, once you've actually got a layout you like, you can actually save it if you want to, okay? But we're gonna just leave it with default, okay? Okay, let's go into each of the windows. So I think the first thing to mention is the hierarchy. So over here, we have the hierarchy. Now this is everything in your scene. It's basically a big list of everything in your scene. You can open it up with this little arrow here. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a camera and a light. Those are the two things it gives you by default. If we get rid of the light, the scene goes dark. If we get rid of the camera, when we go to the game view, we can't see, okay? So the scene is where everything is. And you see, if we click on things over here in the inspector, we have data about them. I'll explain that in a minute, but effectively, when you click something, it highlights it in the inspector and in the scene. So let's double click on the main camera. 
by double clicking on it, it selects it in the scene. And if it moves, uh, and then I double click on it again, I get an updated position to where it is. To actually move in the uh, inspector, sorry, in the scene here, so this is the scene tab, to move, you hold right click and you look around. So by moving the mouse, then you hold WASD to move around relative to where you're looking. So W goes forwards. And if you hold shift, you actually go really fast, okay? And there are other controls like if you scroll wheel, you can slow down the speed and so stuff like that uh, you can do if you want to. And you see here we've got our camera. Now this little picture is uh, only visible to us in the scene view. This is the kind of development view. This is not what the player sees. You can actually turn off gizmos, but anyway, it helps us for now. Okay, if we go to the game view, you actually see what the player sees and the player sees through a camera, okay? So this camera is where the player sees. If we stick something in front of this camera, you'll be able to see it in the game view, okay? We can do that right now by right clicking in the inspector, going down to 3D object, for example, and making a cube, okay? Now this cube is put over there. You can actually uh, change it in the inspector, but I'll do that in a minute. For now, we'll just drag it around a little bit. And if we go back to the game view, you'll see it's there in front of the camera. The camera can see it, okay? If we, for example, go to the game view, click on the main camera, then go over to here. So this is the inspector, the next thing to mention, okay? So the inspector is all the data about the thing you've currently got selected. So we have selected the main camera by clicking on it. And now we can rename it here. You can actually rename it over here if you press F2. But um, let's say we rename it over here to just like camera. Okay, it updates it in the inspector, in the hierarchy. And then over here, you've got all the components. There are also these tags and layers, but we're gonna ignore that for now. The components are actually what makes up an object. It drives the logic for how something behaves. So this camera has three components. It has the transform component. So if we go back to the scene view, the transform component is about where something is, its rotation and its size, okay? So right now, the position of this camera is zero on the x-axis, okay? One on the y-axis and minus 10 on the z-axis. So that's how stuff moves. You change these values, the x, y, and z of the position. Obviously you change that in code and that's in a future video. We're not gonna be writing any code this video. Then for the rotation, we obviously can tweak rotation. I don't need to explain this. Um, that's how you tweak that. And then scale doesn't actually affect the camera, but if we, for example, go to our cube, okay, the cube and we tweak the X scale, it gets bigger on the X axis. And then Y makes it get taller and then Z makes it get thicker, okay. And then you can press Control Z to undo. So that's all about how the position, rotation, and scale is. Then we have the mesh filter on the cube. The mesh filter simply tells it which mesh, and a mesh is like a shape, um, tells it which to be. Okay, so it's saying I am a cube, and I can click here and change it to a sphere. Okay, now it's a sphere. Um, I'll explain the green box in a second, but I'm going to undo it back to a cube. Then we have, along with the cube mesh filter, we have the mesh renderer, which handles rendering the mesh. So if we turn this off, the cube still exists in the scene, we just can't see it, okay? That's quite simply what it does. And it stores data about lighting and shadows, but we're going to ignore that for now too. And then finally, the box collider. This um, handles collisions. So if we, for example, have two cubes with a box collider and they collide, they won't go through each other, okay? So we can test this now. I'm going to just uh, create a little example. So I'm going to make a plane as the floor and put it at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to take the cube and also put it at 0, 0, 0. So now the cube, if we double click on it, we go over here. I'm gonna actually bring it up a little bit so it's above the ground. Uh, let's put it up at uh, two units, okay? And we're gonna add another component to it. So to add a component to do more logic and more behavior, you click add component and you type what you want. So we're gonna use the rigid body. The rigid body basically tells this thing to use the physics system. By default, if we don't have this and we press play, so let's remove it and press play. It just kind of hovers there above the ground. But then if we um, add the rigid body, okay? We have all these settings about mass, drag, angular drag, use gravity. If we press play now, it's gonna fall to the ground and stop. There we go, it landed on the ground. Let's actually give the player a different color so that we can see him. So to do that, we're gonna now move over to the asset view, okay, the project view. Assets is basically your folder for your projects. So if we show an explorer, go to assets. Here it is, it's our scenes and the metadata you can't see uh, in, the, in here. Our scenes is basically our, uh, basically our level, sorry. So this is a scene and I could go in here and create by right clicking, go create, uh, find the scene. And if I just go to it and press save, I'm now in a new scene, it's a new level, but we're gonna get rid of that scene by pressing delete. Um, back to this scene. Uh, oops, I should have pressed don't save. Uh, there we go. Okay, so what we have now is we have our cube. In our assets, uh, we have our scene. 
Now let's make a folder for materials. So if we make materials folder, okay, and we go into our materials folder, we can create a new material. And the material is basically what makes something look the way it does. Now there's materials built in by default and textures that come with the engine and shaders, but that's all for another video. We're simply gonna create a new material and call it uh, player or maybe mat underscore player. I'm gonna drag it onto the player and let go. And then now I can tweak all these values about how it's rendered using the standard shader. So for example, all we're gonna do is just change the color. We can pick for example, blue. And now we've got a blue player. Okay, we save that and then we press play. It's a lot easier to see the cube because it's not the same color as the ground. And now the thing I mentioned about colliders, if we take this cube, we can now press control D, which will duplicate it. So now we have two cubes in the same position. Everything's the same. I'm now going to drag it with these arrows, put it over here. And when it falls, it's actually going to hit this cube and then it's going to essentially roll over because uh, it collides using the collider and the rigid body. There we go. Our cube now flips over to the side. So just by adding a few components, we've now got some gameplay logic and it's nothing complex because we haven't written our own code. This is simply using built in code. Okay, when we make code later, we attach it to here. We have our own custom code. Uh, obviously physics is uh, like the rigid body and colliders. Then we've got the rendering and there's other stuff in here. If you actually clear your search, you can see all the different types of built in uh, scripts. So you can look at the audio related scripts, for example, um, didn't mean to click that. Uh, go back to audio. Ignore that for now, unless you want to start messing with it on your own, you know, feel free with this engine, just do whatever you like, you know, unless you're doing it, working on a serious game, you can just mess around and do whatever you like. But essentially now I've covered the project, you know, this is where you have your assets, where you import materials, images, it's where you have your code when you write code, you know, you can make all these different things. So much to cover in our next few videos. Um, the hierarchy is where all the stuff in your scene is like our cubes and our camera and our lighting. So for example, this light, if I tweak the rotation, you'll notice how the light changes, like it's uh, the time of day passing, okay? Um, you can tweak the tint of the light, you can make a pink light if you want to, it's up to you. Um, I'm just gonna go for a white light. And then uh, we can also collapse components if they're using up too much room, because you can imagine if you have lots of components, you have to scroll down and scroll down. So you can just collapse the ones you're not using or you don't really care about. So then we've got the game view scene, hierarchy, project, inspector, there's two more. There's the console. So the console is where we actually have output. Uh, for example, we can output to the console ourselves if we want to say, for example, um, log where the player is, we can log every frame where the player is. It's not recommended to actually do that in an actual game, but it's something we can do. And you can also log for errors and there are actually certain things Unity will log for you. So for example, if we created some code and then we you know, did some wrong code, it wouldn't compile, it would tell us here in the console. But for now we have no errors, so it's fine. And then the asset store is just a way for you to be able to go and download pre-made assets, whether that's models, audio, code, uh, that people have put on the asset store. Some are free, some are paid. You know, it's up to you to go and look on here. I would recommend as a beginner, not, you know, diving in and downloading loads of random packages because, you know, you actually want to learn rather than using pre-made stuff when you start. And a lot of this, um, a lot of these assets aren't really necessary when you're learning. Um, but later on, maybe if you're a programmer and you need some, you know, models and you don't do modeling, you can go get something off the asset store or off online. It's up to you, right? Um, yeah, you can close. Uh, tabs by pressing your middle mouse button in so I can close the game view and if you want to reopen it you click on window general and then game it's docked like this or undocked and then you can drag it and dock it back okay uh, you can do other things here on the game view for example you can set the resolution to for example 1920 by 1080 so when you resize the window it still keeps the resolution that you selected um, you can even have uh, duplicates of the same thing so I could get another inspector uh, I think I'd have to lock this though. We'll get into that in another video when we need to, but for now we don't need to, it's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, so just have have some fun uh, clicking around on different objects, looking at these different components, tweaking values on them. Uh, notice that you can actually disable certain components, like uh, even while having the cube active, we can still just get rid of its rendering or get rid of its collision. Um, one other thing about collisions is there's this box for is trigger. So by now, uh, by default, if I press play, they will physically collide and hit each other. But if I make this a trigger, what's gonna happen is anything that touches this is gonna fall through. Okay, that cube that I changed falls through stuff. The reason you might wanna use this is because you might want things that don't physically push against each other, but still detect collisions, okay? Use triggers for detecting collisions. 
uh, and in rigid body, yep, you can tweak all this stuff. And there's so many more settings you can tweak. For example, if you go up to uh, edit and then you go down to project settings, there's a many, many settings on your project. Now, the only stuff I'd recommend uh, changing right away might be, for example, putting in your company name, your product name, uh, and you know, there's nothing else really here you need to change. Um, though in future videos, we will be tweaking stuff like uh, down here, we'll be tweaking maybe the input system. We might be going over here and getting some packages. You know, there'll be different things I'll be showing you in the next few videos, but I want to keep this one short and simple. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to ask any questions down below about setting up Unity and any problems you've had, and I'll be sure to get back to you on that. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before we go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Hedy Zorko, Rene, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.